Now we like to continue our discussion of Bessel equations. The solution of a given Bessel equations are called Bessel functions. And uh, based on our discussion before the spring break, we understand a Bessel equation takes this form. It is a second order linear order OD with non-constant coefficients. It arise very frequently when we deal with uh, cylindrical, cylindrical object. And uh, based on the Fubini's series solution theory, we understand the Fubini series solution exists. So we can start analyzing the coefficient based on the indicial equation. And the, before the spring break, we uh, discuss the in, indicial equation, take this form and uh, its root are positive nu and the negative nu. And uh, since nu can be any real numbers, it can be integers, it can be a fractional numbers. Uh, so um, uh, the solution of a Bessel equation will depend on the value of nu. And uh, from the recurrence relation, we are able to generate this relation. Any coefficient in the series solution can be related to the leading coefficient. And as we know, uh, for the first solution, it allows one unknown arbitrary number because the final solution will be proportional to a naught. And this specific constant has to be determined based on the given boundary condition. That also means we can collectively uh, make a policy to determine what this value a naught is. So we can unify the definition of Bessel functions. And that uh, if we put this equation on the next slide, uh, we can see, uh, again, this is the same equation. And uh, our subsequent discussion will depend on the nature of nu. First, let's discuss uh, positive integers as the value of nu. And if this is the case, we can define a naught like this uh, value. A naught equal to this value so that the coefficient we discussed earlier has a specific number. If we define this way, then we can define the Bessel functions in this form. This is a, a important uh, conclusion. Uh, for integer value of nu, we can specifically express the first solution look like this. And uh, this has a very important use. That's why we give a name called Bessel function of the first kind of order n. And uh, for the special situations, when the new value equal to zero or one, we have this uh, J0 look like this, J1 look like this. Um, they can be 
expand very easily like this. And then we can also discuss uh, for any arbitrary Bessel function of first kind of order n for large x, for large x, we can simplify the uh, solution, the series solution in this form, because they are oscillating functions that we are going to see on the next slide. And as you can tell, Bessel function of uh, first kind of order zero look like a cosine function. And uh, Bessel function of first kind of order one look like a sine function. It oscillates. For a Bessel function of first kind of any positive integers, they all like j sub one, except the the aptitude, the period are slightly different. Okay. Um, then uh, we are still discussing the Bessel function of the first kind for the first solutions. If um, nu is not an integer, but it's a positive, in, a positive real number, then we define a naught like this. And uh, in the denominator of this definition, we see a gamma function. Gamma function uh, is defined like this uh, special function. And the, the interesting thing of this gamma function is that uh, it has the property like this. So gamma of n plus one equal to n factorial. This is a very interesting property. So that means what we discussed earlier about the Bessel function of first kind of order n become a special case of this, case, this discussion. Now, for a fractional neighbor of nu, the co-option can then be simplified like what we present in this way. The co-options are fully defined, well defined. And then uh, the Bessel function of the first kind of any older nu. Nu cannot be an integer, it can be one half, can be one third, etc then Bessel function of the first kind of order nu can be defined like this format. And uh, in the next slide, we discuss uh, some properties of uh, Bessel function of the first kind of order nu. Um, what I like you to know uh, these relations exist, but uh, we will not use them in the semester, in this semester. This four formula tells us the relation between j nu and uh, j nu plus one. Uh, these two relation tells us the relation between j nu and the two other neighboring j's. Um, and uh, for large x, we can approach the Bessel function of order nu with sine cosine function like this. And that the shape 
look like this. They are also oscillating functions. Then uh, we can make certain conclusions. If uh, nu is not an integer, then the general expression for the Bessel equation can be expressed like this. This is only for the case one of the Fubini's problem. We cannot use this expression for case two, case three problem because J sub minus N is a linearly dependent function of J sub N. It uh, actually has this relation. Therefore, for case two, case three problem, we have to discuss separately, which will be discussed in the next segment of my slide.